What's going on guys? Welcome to another video and today we have the Super Tournament on Cherokee. It is the last tournament for the Volunteer Division. I'm sitting pretty solid in points. I believe I'm sitting in 18th in points. So I need to have a okay tournament to make regional. With that being said, I knew I had to have a somewhat of a decent practice because not only do you want to make regional, but you also want to do good. You want to try to get that top 10 in points. You want to you know, sit very well going into it and possibly fish the second day in a super tournament. So in this video, I have the practice and the tournament video for you guys. We're going to go ahead and hop right into practice and I will see you guys here in just a second. <laughs> That's a good one, boys. There's fish on this bluff. That's a solid keeper. You got it the way you want them to get it, too. It's a solid fish. There's a solid one. I'm sure that's a keeper. I think they got to be 14 here. Oh yeah, he's 15 inches. Solid fish, healthy. He's not done. He's not done fighting. He's lost. He ain't supposed to be pure shallow like that. I ain't no feel keep. Yep, seventeen. It's a good one. I'm pretty sure I'll keep measuring just to make sure. Yeah, he's almost 17 inches. I wish he was healthier though.
good spot. That's a good one. The whole reason I came over here is just to see if there's some here. It's a jumper, about 14, 15 inches. That's a good one, boys. My drag slipped on me. That's a that's a good one. He's not as healthy as I might want to be. But that's a good one. Old big stick, son. Old big stick. I just had one chase my lure out of the stock over here behind me. It probably would have been a keeper right there. That's a three pounder. So as you guys saw there in practice, I had what I would consider a somewhat decent practice. It is September, it's super tough. So it, fishing in September can be very feast or famine. You can either do decent or you could just totally bomb. So to go in there and have a solid, what I would consider a solid practice, you know, I went out there, caught a couple keepers each day, and I caught that three pounder and had a few more good fish on that got off and everything, had a few more good blow ups. So I had a decent confidence going into the tournament, but what happened next threw me for a complete curveball. That might be regional. Thank you, sir. Got you. Oh, why is a small mouth up here? So as you guys saw, there was a fog delay and it was like a two, two and a half hour fog delay. And that shortened my day quite a bit. I lost my top water bites and I just never made the right adjustments for the shortened day. I tried to make stuff work that wasn't working and I may or may not have gave one, one or two techniques or one or two patterns that I found long enough to develop or just didn't run it long enough. I have no idea what I really done wrong. Um, that's the only thing I can think of to be honest with you guys. But as you guys did see, I caught one fish. That one fish was a little over two pounds and it was actually enough for me to qualify for the regional. But as the time I'm recording this right now, regional has done coming past. I actually did not go to regional. I was thankful enough to qualify for it but it was going to be a tournament that I personally did not feel ready for. Um, I thought I would 
be a little bit more ready for it, but I could not figure it out, to be honest with you guys. I, the tournament was one live scope, but I think the, everybody in the top team was live scoping out there, chasing them around, and if you guys watch my videos, you know that I love to beat the bank. I'm more of a shallow water guy, and I mean, I, I would consider myself a versatile angler, but I'm not very strong with the whole chasing bait around, chasing fish around with a live scope. With that being said, it is now December and we are in prime live scope season, so I'll be doing a lot of that this winter. I'm going to be trying to dial it in, try to get as good as I can at it, so I can go chase some of these other tournaments that are predominantly live scope dominant tournaments. Um, and I know the whole live scope versus no live scope is like a big topic right now. So if you guys want my personal opinion on the whole live scope deal, whether you should have it or you shouldn't, this is my personal opinion. Fishing is always evolving. Um, do I wish that it never came out? Yes, some of me does, some of me doesn't because it does help me out in my offshore game. But do I need it? No, I don't need it. But if you go to certain lakes, certain events, you will get your teeth kicked in. So that is where I'm at with it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So I'm going to try my best to learn it best I can. Uh, just it's no different than all the people that were getting their teeth kicked in once people figured out how to catch them offshore. You have to go out there, put the time in, figure out how to do it. That way you can catch them. So now, whenever we're on an offshore tournament, I feel like I can somewhat hold my own. Offshore tournament was on Watts Bar. Granted, that was my home lake. I finished 19th in it. Caught three of my fish, or I caught three fish offshore, and then I end up catching one up shallow that cold it out. So you know, it's 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 a very sensitive topic for some people. Um, is it going anywhere? My personal opinion, no. There's way too much money wrapped into it. Uh, Garmin, Hummingbird, Lawrence, they put so much money into sponsorships and supporting these major tournaments. I do not think it's going anywhere. Does it need to be handicapped or a certain rule on it? Uh, yes and no. I think certain levels, I don't know. It, it's, it's a very sensitive topic. If you guys want to see an entire video on that, I will do a live video or a podcast or something. We will figure something out and make an entire video on the whole live scope is killing bass fishing or live scope is helping bass fishing. Who knows? But that is all I have for you guys today. I want to thank every single one of you guys for watching this year. Uh, I want to thank all my sponsors that continue to support me and help me. Um, you guys. You know, you, you don't know how much it helps me. You don't know how much it means to me that I have your support behind me. Um, it goes for Morristown Marine, Angler Tungsten, Omega Custom Tackle, Turnkey Transportation. That's a local company. Um, just all you guys, the support, I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to next year. So, BFLs 2024. We're going to go run the BFL Volunteer Division Series again. And I'm going to, I would like to hop into some other ones. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, catch them big.